Welcome to Minutes That Matter. In this video, we will learn how to install and configure DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. Now, in our previous video, we have seen how to install and configure DNS. In this video, we will use our domain controller to install DHCP. In real time, we will never install DHCP service on a domain controller. We only use member servers for that purpose. Now, in the server manager, you can notice that there is no DHCP service listed, meaning the role is not installed yet. You can observe it in the server manager console tree or you can click on tools and you can see the list of Microsoft management consoles. Here also see that DHCP is not installed. Okay, so let's go with add roles and features wizard click next role based next select dhcp accept the required features click next next again and then install now once the dhcp service is installed or dhcp role is installed we need to authorize it now only two types of users can authorize a DHCP server that is an enterprise administrator or a domain administrator. So now on this computer we have logged in already as our enterprise or domain administrators. So we can simply authorize the DHCP by clicking at the notification area and then selecting authorize and then commit. Now once authorization is complete, we can go to tools, we can select the DHCP in the list. Now we are going to configure IPv4 address, so we will expand server 01 and proceed with IPv4. Notice the new scope option, we can see either scope or multicast scope but not super scope. Now let me give the scope name as scope1 and I am using a range of IPv4 address that is 192.168.10. series. Now I am going to give it let's say from 11 onwards till 192.168.10. say 254. Now, there is one thing which you need to remember. We should not give multiple networks for a single scope or multiple scopes for a single network. Okay. Now, we can also include an exclusion range here. That means this specific range of IP addresses listed in the exclusion range will not be assigned by DHCP. Okay. Now, here is the default lease duration that is 8 days. We would like to configure the DHCP scope. We don't have any router in our network, so we can sk skip the default gateway. DNS domain name is already known, that is india.com. The DNS server we have right now is 10.1. We can also include an alternate DNS, say 10.3. Now notice, we can go ahead and configure it, but we need to make sure that 10.1 is on the top that is it's going to act as a preferred DNS 10.3 is going to act as alternate DNS now WINS is not required let's activate the scope now notice the blue color exclamation mark on the scope represents that there is an exclusion range we can explore a lot of options in here but for now let's go ahead from uh, address pool so you can see here is the exclusion range. Now if at all we want to assign this IP addresses as well by DHCP then we need to delete this range. Now address lease, reservation, scope options, policies these are some of the options or some of the parameters of a scope. Now in address pool let's say we delete the exclusion range. Notice the exclamation mark is gone. That means the entire range is available in the address pool. 
now coming to the address list we'll have details about multiple dhcp clients okay now notice we got a super scope option when we select right click on the ipv4 the reason behind it is a super scope is a combination of one or more scopes so let's say we create a new scope called s02 and we'll give another network range that is 192.168.11. Okay, so we use the complete range of 11. Dot network. Okay, let's say we don't want any exclusion range, we want to keep the default lease duration and no gateway. No gateway, no gateway because there is no router. Okay, so you can see now we have two scopes. Now, my idea of creating another scope is to show you how to configure a super scope and also test backup for DHCP. So, let's say we create a new scope, let's call it as SS01, that is super scope 01. Let's click next. Now we can select both the scopes 10 dot and 11 dot networks. We'll say finish. Now you can see a super scope is created. Now let's check a multicast scope. Now multicast scope uh, is something which has the network range starting from class D that is 224.0.0.0 to 239.255.255.255 now you can see i have given a valid range and i'm proceeding you can see i have given a valid range notice a multicast scope has only two parameters address pool and address lease Now, by the way, if at all we want to configure a reservation, that is, we can select a new reservation and give a reservation name. Now, the meaning of this is we can permanently assign an IP address through DHCP to a specific client, but we need the MAC address of the client. Now let's say I want to test my DHCP whether uh, the scope is running properly or not. I can add just one more network adapter to the existing DHCP server. As because I am on the virtual machine. Now notice I have just added a new network adapter. So when I go to my local server and Ethernet. I will be able to see I got two Ethernet adapters that is Ethernet 0 which was the default Ethernet 1 which I just created. Notice if we select the details and watch just now the IP address got assigned to this network adapter. You can see the DHCP server you can see the alternate DNS which we gave. Okay we can check it as well on the DHCP server. Let's say I want to test a DHCP on a different computer altogether. So let's say we pick server 05 and uh, let's say we select obtain IP address automatically instead of going for using a specific IP address. Now here is the question. What IP address should be visible here? Answer. The first IP address in the scope which we created was already taken. So the second IP address that is 10.12 should be visible. There you can see we got our IP address 
okay let's check in the address lease the details about our two clients which got ip address through our dhcp server you can see one is our server one the new network adapter which we added received 10.11 as its ip address and the network adapter on server 05 also obtained an ip address from the dhcp server that is 10.12 Server options and scope options are pretty much similar, but server options will be applied to all the scopes within the DHCP. And here, server options for the specific type of IP addressing, that is IPv4. We can also have server options for IPv6. Now, by the way, if I want to take backup of my DHCP records or scopes, then let's say I choose that option and create a new folder called, let's say, DHCP itself. Okay. Now, notice I just created a new backup in a folder called DHCP in C drive. Now let's delete one of the scopes. Okay, 11 dot network is gone. Now can we get the 11 dot network or 11 dot scope back? Yes. All you have to do is go for action, go for restore, select your C drive, select the DHCP folder and say okay and yes. Now as soon as you select that, you will be able to see the new scope has been added. By the way, if we want to check DHCP related commands, we can type IP config space slash question mark. Now that gives you a list of commands which you can use for your DHCP. The most common commands for DHCP are IP config release and IP config renew. Okay, so I believe in this video you have learned how to install DHCP, how to create a scope, super scope and multicast scope and how to check the IP addresses. Thank you for watching.